Let's now build a Mongoose schema. In a later video, we'll be digging into the Mongoose API in more detail. But for now, we'll tackle the most used aspect of Mongoose, which is the creation and usage of schemas. You can find out more about building these schemas and using different data types on the Mongoose documents page. We'll start out by creating a file called book.model.js. So I'm going to navigate into an examples folder. Navigate into there. So we'll be building a book schema or model and you can think of a model as the basis of a database architecture. So each schema that we build will have this file name structure and I'll generally refer to either the model or the schema which can be used pretty interchangeably. So we'll start off by defining a couple variables. First we make sure that we require mongoose. So we're going to be creating a book schema and a schema is a method that we get from mongoose. We're going to be exporting our model for usage in other files. So we can go ahead and do that now. We can say module.exports equals a mongoose model and we're going to name our schema book and we're going to pass in the name of our schema which we'll create now which is book schema. Okay, now we'll say book schema equals a new schema, which again is a mongoose schema. There's two ways that we can set up our key value pair fields. We can either set them up directly like this. So this implicitly sets our data type to string, or we can pass in an object. For the data type, it's always referenced as type. When I'm creating a schema, I'll typically use the first method or way of defining our data types. However, Mongoose gives us the ability to add in optional fields. So one kind of optional field is the required field that we can set to true or false. The default is set to false, meaning that this field is required in order for this model to be saved. Another often used field is unique. You'll see this a lot of times used when someone is building up a schema that requires an email. So you want to make sure that the email that the user has submitted has only been used once. Here's another kind of optional field that's called default. So this is used in case a user hasn't inputted anything into the field or nothing has been generated, we can set a default key to make sure that something gets saved. You'll see this used a lot of the time with dates, setting a default to date.now, which makes sure that the date is being saved as an ISO date for right now. We can set the keywords as an array. Published can be a boolean, so it can be true or false, published or not. We can set the author as a type schema.objectID, which will reference another schema or model that we've created in another file. So we always need to have some kind of a reference, and we'll name the reference as the user. So when this model is saved, it will grab the reference of the user model and add it into this field. So if we were to reference our book model somewhere else, saying schema.objectID, we would use book as the reference. Sometimes you'll see the type as schema.type.objectID. Essentially it's the same thing, it's just an alternative way of saying schema.objectID. We can also add embedded subdocuments and embedded arrays. So an embedded subdocument would look something like this. So this would be something that you might see in an Amazon type store where underneath the details we're listing 
the book model number, whether or not it's a hardcover, the number of reviews, and the ranking within a category. The data within these subdocuments can be retrieved using dot notation. So in this example, we would display the object using something like data.detail.model number in order to retrieve that information. So in this video, we talked about the different data types that we can create within MongoDB, and we provide an example of what a Mongo schema might look like when we're creating these different models. In the next video, we'll see how we can use different find methods for retrieving data from a model.